Good morning, everyone. This is Sue Frost. Welcome to the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, Sac Sacramento Area Sewer District, Sacramento County Sanitation District's Financing Authority. Today's date is January 13, 2021, and this meeting is hereby called to order. At this time, I will ask our clerk if she will take the roll and establish quorum, please. Good morning, Member Bruins. Member Harris. Thank Member, you. thank you. Member Howell. Member Hume. Here. Kennedy. Here. Lolohi. Singh Allen. Here. Gatewood. Here. Natoli. Orozco. Here. Desmond. Here. Serna. Here. Valenzuela. Here. Vang. Here. Viegas. Present. And Frost. Here. You have a quorum. Okay, and I'm going to invite my colleague and supervisor, Rich Desmond, to, if you would mind, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Rich. And I heard a lot of new voices. Uh, I'm going to look forward to our meeting today and in welcoming everyone. At this time, if the clerk would um, please read the video statement. This meeting of the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation and Sacramento Area Sewer Districts is being recorded and will be broadcast on Sunday, January 17th at 6 p.m. on Metro Cable 14, the Local Government Affairs Channel, on the Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T U-verse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned for our hearing impaired viewers. In accordance with the Government Code 54952.3, compensation for meeting of these legislative bodies is required to be verbally disclosed. The amount of $100 will be paid for each member participating today as a member of the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, and the amount of $100 will be paid for each board member participating today as a member of the Sacramento Area Sewer District. Compensation for Sacramento County Supervisors and City of Sacramento Council members is paid to the county and city respectively to partially offset the cost of those governments. Compensation for each board member is delivered to the individuals. In compliance with the directives of the county, state, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, this meeting is live stream and closed caption to the public. Temporary procedures are subject to change pursuant to guidelines related to social distancing and minimizing person-to-person -person contact. To make a verbal comment at today's meeting, dial 916-875-2500 and follow the prompts to be placed in a queue for a specific agenda item or off-agenda matter. When I open the public meeting for a specific agenda item or off agenda matter, you will be transferred from the queue into the meeting to make a verbal comment. Written comments are also accepted. Please send your e email comment to boardclerk at sackcounty.net. Your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And at this time, We'll proceed with our Section 1 timed matters for Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District. And if the clerk will read the first item, please. Introduction of new board members. Um, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Provoker. Uh, members of the board, Happy New Year. Um, normally, this time of the year, when we have new members, uh, if we have a Physical attendance, you will all be introducing yourselves and I wouldn't have to do this, but since we are doing remote meetings that I'm going to just spend a couple of minutes uh, to introduce new members. And also, uh, before I do that, for the benefit of the new members, as you have read, Chair, that there are three boards that are convening here, uh, Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, Sacramento Area Sewer District, and uh, from time to time, Sacramento County Sanitation District Financing Authority. Um, just for the benefit of the new members, um, Sacramento Area Sewer District 
collects sewage from homes from the unincorporated area of the county, plus all the cities within the county other than one half of the city of Sacramento and most of the city of Folsom. Uh, of course, uh, um, it does not collect from Galt or Isleton, but in the general area of the Sacramento. Roughly 1.2 million uh, people that it serves. It collects sewage from homes and brings in and delivers to regional sand. Regional sand is what you will consider as a wholesaler. Um, it has large pipes and it takes the sewage down to wastewater treatment plant in El Grove and treats it and disposes of it. Regional Sand has 17 member board and a subset of 10 serve on the SASD board. All 17 serve on the financing authority. The financing authority essentially exists for the purpose of issuing and managing the debt for both districts. So those are the functions of the three districts. And uh, so as I introduce new members, and I'll also say which one is serving on what and, and so forth. So um, also, um, at least in my memory, and also in, certainly in my time in this chair, I have not seen as many new members as there are this time. We, we have six new members, potentially more. Um, so uh, I'll go with the county, Supervisor Rich Desmond, uh, is is a new member to the board. He's going to be serving on all three of them uh, in his uh, role as a, as a supervisor. And then the next is City of Elk Grove. Um, we have Mayor Bobby Singh Allen. She's going to be serving as a Regional SAN board member. And she's also alternate for the Sacramento Area Sewer District uh, behind a Director Hume, uh, who is also the member of both Regional SAN and SASD. And for City of Rancho Cordova, uh, Mayor Garrett Gatewood is the has been and is the alternate member. The city has not finalized their roster of appointments, and they will do so at the end of this month. So we may have a change depending on how the the city uh, makes that uh, appointment. But uh, Mayor Gatewood is on the phone, and he serves on both the Regional SAN and the SASD board as well as the Financing Authority. Um, City of Sacramento, we have three new members. Um, Council member Katie Valenzuela, uh, she's on the Regional Sand Board. And so is uh, Councilman Sean Lolowi, uh, he's on the Regional Sand Board. And Council member Mai Vang, uh, she is serving on both the Regional Sand and the SASD boards. Uh, the other council member that is from the city is Jeff Harris, and he continues. Uh, as a board member. We do not have alternates for either the Regional SAN or the SASD from the city at this point. So that's the, the roundup of all the new members. And uh, again, I want to thank all the new members for uh, willing to serve on this board and I appreciate your time. Yes, and I would like to also add a, a welcome to all the new members. I'm disappointed that I'm here and you're there over the phone and I can't see your face and connect the, the face and get to know you, but I'm sure over time we'll, we'll have that uh, connection and we all look forward to working with you. I want you to know that Regional Sanitation is the best board to be on. Everybody loves this board because they, they manage their money really well. They um, manage their projects well. Um, it's just one of those fun boards that um, you get things done, and and it seems like um, very often a happy ending because uh, they have such an amazing team behind us doing all the work. So uh, welcome, and we'll look forward to working with all of you. And so at this time, we will move on to the next item, please. Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District, District Separate Matters, Election of Chair and Vice Chair for the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and the Sacramento Area Sewer District Boards. Again, good morning. Um, this is the meeting where we, uh, the, uh, the chair and vice chair positions rotate. And before I uh, introduce the, the discussion, I want to thank uh, Chair Sue Frost for her service last year under difficult terms. Uh, and uh, she has done a marvelous job in uh, uh, you know, making sure the board is run properly and, and uh, things done. So I want to thank, thank you for your service. Thank you, Prabhakar. You're very kind. Um, so the way, just to also for the benefit of the, the new members, um, the way the, the chair and vice chair appointments go, it's rotate, they're rotated between the county 
and the city members uh, alternate years. So one year the county member is a chair and the city member is the vice chair and then the vice chair becomes chair and so forth. The current assignment is Director Frost or Chair Frost is a chair and uh, Director Howell is the vice chair from City of Folsom. So in the tradition that Director Howell will become chair this year, then the county side of it is um, when I would look through the back, the roster, this year would have been the term of uh, uh, Director Peters, who retired. Uh, so I have spoken with uh, uh, Supervisor Desmond, who uh, graciously agreed uh, to be considered for the vice chair. Uh, so um, my, my suggestion is for uh, Director Howell to take the, the chair role and uh, uh, Director Res Desmond to take the vice chair role. Uh, that's that's my recommendation, but I'm going to leave to the chair and others to to have the comment. I would like to <laughs> take the liberty of nominating Carrie Hal for chair, and I think sh should we just go ahead and do chair first and then do vice chair, or do we have need two votes, or is it can we do this in one? You can incorporate it in one. One vote is fine. Okay, I'll nominate Carrie Hal for chair and um, Director Desmond for vice chair. And I would second the motion. I'll second that. Oh. Uh, Supervisor Natoli made it first, so thank you, whoever that was on the phone. Um, Director so, Harris. That, that. Oh, Director Harris, thank uh, you. you, you, get you get <laughs> uh, so we have a uh, uh, we have a motion and a second, and if the clerk will please call the roll call vote. Member Bruins. Member Harris. Aye. Member Howell. Yes. Member Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Loloi? Singh Allen? Yes. Gatewood? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Desmond? Aye. Serna? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Vang? Yes. Villegas? Yes. And Frost? Aye. And that's a unanimous vote of the members present. Okay, great. And at this time, I'll hand the gavel over to our new chair, Director Howell. Thank you, everyone. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve as chair, and I look forward to another great year with uh, Director Hal at the helm. Because the speech is fun. <laughs> Can we move on to the next item? Next item, Acting Users Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District, District Separate Matters. Item number three, amendments to the master interagency agreement between Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and its contributing agencies. Um, good morning, Chair again. Before Christoph uh, makes his presentation, uh, let me um, just tee this up a little bit. Uh, background. Uh, again, also it's for because we have a lot of new members. Um, Regional SAN was formed in 1973. And the Sacramento Area Sewer District was formed in 1978. There were predecessor smaller sewer districts. They were all merged under the federal grant program. And at the time, we have received one of the largest, if not the largest, grants in the nation, close to half a billion dollars to build the regional uh, sewer system. Um, when it was formed, the signatories were the city of Sacramento, city of uh, Folsom, uh, the, the two incorporating cities, incorporated cities at this time in, in the region, and the County of Sacramento, Sacramento Area Sewer District, and Regional Sand. Those were the signatories. There's, there's an agreement that essentially defined the operational maintenance, uh, ownership responsibilities for the assets. Um, the county became the signatory largely because there's a provision in the agreement, uh, just it's a one line, that establishes the staffing relationship. Again, those are the new members that are not uh, you know, aware of how the districts are staffed. The Regional San and SASD are independent sewer districts, but they're staffed by the County of Sacramento. Um, so that's how the Master Interagency Agreement was developed in 1973. And it, have, it was amended numerous times from that time 
with the last amendment in 1996. The uh, current agreement um, uh, is set to expire in 2024. Um, we, uh, um, we started working on the amendment a couple of years ago for uh, two main reasons, uh, probably two or three main reasons. The first and foremost is when uh, the last amendment was done in 1996, it was set for, to expire in 2024 to coincide with the debt that the districts held at the time. Uh, because the master interagency agreement is an agreement that binds the regional SAN to the contributing agencies, meaning in terms of financial responsibilities and so forth. So our bondholders would look that as essentially as a surety that the regional SAN is a good um, debt, uh, good, good, good risk. Um, but since that time, we have done a lot of projects and our debt, we have issued a lot more debt um, and we are the, the uh, uh, sunsetting of the debt is now into 2030s and 2040s and so forth. So the um, rating agencies, which we go to every year for to get our rating, uh, they have been asking us when we would be um, you know, extending this agreement to get some um, sense of surety for them that you know, we're continuing to have this relationship for the long term because we're in the market uh, issuing new debt or refinancing the existing debt. So that's one of the main reasons to look at the, the, the amendment. The second one is the way that the, in, uh, the agreement is structured, the regional SANS revenue collection uh, is entirely the responsibility of the contributing agencies, meaning that regional SAN does not pay anything um, to the contributing agencies for collecting its revenue, the rates. Uh, or regional SAN does not have any responsibility for the bad debt. Um, and especially when there's a downturn, which we had in a great recession, and even to some degree recently, uh, these contributing agencies where they do not have the reserves, they are in a financial strain because they have to pay the regional SAN up front to essentially then go collect the revenue and eat whatever that isn't collected. So we've been approached by the contributing agencies asking for some relief. So the only way we could do that is through an amendment and to look at that. And that's what started a couple of years ago. And it's, it's a long process. We have worked with the contributing agencies um, and essentially we arrived at um, highlights of changes to the master agency agreement. And so Christophe will uh, describe what those are and then what happens is later, when all the contributing agencies have approved this, we'll bring back for our boards to finally approve this, probably in April or so. With that, I'm going to let Christophe kind of walk you through the major changes to the contributing uh, to the agreement. All right, good morning, Chair and board members, and welcome to the new board members, um, both here and on the phone. My name is Christophe Dobson. I'm the Director of Policy and Planning for Regional SAN and SASD. And I'm going to walk through the um, proposed changes, the kind of the summary of the changes, and those are in attachment A of the board packet. It's just a two-page board packet there. The second page is the bullet points of the major changes. So the first one is to incorporate the City of West Sacramento into the Master Interagency Agreement. Uh, right now, they're covered under a Wastewater Services Agreement. And in that agreement, we talked about the uh, future when the master interagency agreement was going to be updated next that we would incorporate them in as a contributing agency so now is that time uh, the second item is the term of the agreement uh, Prabhakar already touched on that we are extending it or proposing to extend it out to a 50-year term that's the maximum legal allowed term uh, and the purpose of that is to get that surety for the bond, uh, bond rating agencies. So um, we are extending it to 50 years, but at the same time, there was also some concerns from the contributing agencies that that's an awful long time to be locked into an agreement. So we've had uh, <clears throat> the opportunity to update every five years so that we can come back and say, hey, are there any changes that are proposed? If the contributing agency wants to make some changes, we would get together and see if that was um, acceptable to the other parties, and then uh, we could bring, a fo bring forward an amendment to, uh, to make those changes if all parties were agreeable. 
Uh, the next item is on sewer rate collection. Uh, Prabhakar touched on it, and just uh, I think it's helpful to reinforce this a little bit with an example. Um, right now, uh, as an example, you could have a, a hypothetical customer that owes $100 of rates to Regional SAN. Right now, the contributing agency um, would would do the billing for that $100. And let's say that it costs, say, $3 on the contributing agency's part to, uh, to collect that. So they have to um, generate the bills, they have a billing system, they have some staffing, and they have to have postage, that sort of thing. So they're gonna spend $3. Now let's say that the customer doesn't pay all 100. <clears throat> say they pay $90. So right now, the way the agreement is set up, is that, that customer um, only pays $90, the contributing agency still has to pay Regional SAN the full 100 because that's what they owed. In addition, they're also absorbing that $3 cost that they have for doing the billing. And all that we're proposing to change then is that instead, the contributing agency would just pay the $90 to Regional SAN. They would make a good faith effort to collect that, that bad debt but ultimately, if they only got $90, then they would only pay $90 back to Regional SAN. And Regional SAN would reimburse them the $3 cost for their, for their billing. So um, essentially, it's, it's maybe slightly more complicated than that. We're actually gonna establish a, uh, a standard uh, rate to reimburse so that all the contributing agencies are treated equally, but it will be something close to that, that $3 number that they're, that they're spending. Ma'am Chair. So that's how the the um, billing would, would work going forward. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chris, if I, if I could ask yeah. you just on that point, um, this is Member Natoli for those on the phone. Um, but the contributing agencies have, by virtue of the municipalities as well as the counties, have the ability to lean. Does Regional Sand then, and will you still have that same relationship with the assessor uh, or the tax collector's office to? Uh, then do that because again you know what you described is that there certainly could be a gap in the loss but it is recoverable including with interest uh, the agencies have the ability to lean it. I mean, it's not preferable between working with your customers but I mean you know each year we see those on the rolls for delinquent accounts uh, not only in, in this utility but in other utilities and all the cities have their own you know have, have their utility services so does Regional SAN have the same authority? And does that, you know, because those costs, as you talked about, it may be lost initially, but they are recoverable. Sometimes with some delay, it could be years delay for some very delinquent accounts. But I, I, I'm, I'm curious about how this will work out in the agreement. So, so the authority doesn't change. So we would, uh, the mechanics would still be the same. So, you know, we bring forward an item where SASD right. um, transfers those onto the, the tax roll through the county. Um, so those, the, those processes would continue the same. It's just that ultimately there is still a small amount that is truly unrecoverable, and that is the amount that wouldn't be transferred back to regional SAN. Okay, so that's the portion. That's the, but when you say a small amount, you say approximately a million dollars a year in your summary here. That's not the, that's not a very small amount. No. So the million dollars is how much we would be regional SAN would be reimbursing on a roughly on a total basis to all the contributing agencies for their cost to do the billing. That's what the million dollars is. Okay. So what's the what's the estimated um, small portion then that that regional SAM will eat and the contributing agency won't the three dollars or whatever it is? I don't have that. Do you have an estimate for it's, it's it's estimated probably in a hundred to two hundred thousand dollar range. It's, okay. it's an estimate at this point. Okay. Uh, it's, it's truly uncollectible because, like you said, right. you know, we transfer that to, and we get the money back, and there's a penalties and things like that that are associated with it. Uh, largely, I think the, 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 the two big issues are, one, and the postage to send the bills out. That's number one. That's a main, very, that's main issue. The second issue is for especially, for example, City of Sacramento and, uh, and Sacramento Sewer District. Mm -hmm. So Sacramento Sewer, uh, Sewer District, when it leans, it's got about $12 million when it leans because that's uncollected. Right. Roughly $8 million of the $12 million is regional SAM. So you have a, uh, City of Sacramento has to do the same thing on its own, but a smaller amount. 
the thinking is that they are fronting that money to regional SAN, where we don't have the reserves, whereas the regional SAN, who's in a better position to absorb these, these for the time being until you get collected. So that's how we're trying to help them out. Uh, okay. Ultimately, you're right that the actual laws, the main cost is the cost of billing, that which I think it's fair to share because we've never sure. shared with, with the uh, agencies. Okay. That's, that's less than a quarter of 1% of regional SANS revenue. Okay. Um, and also a small amount that may ultimately will never be collected. So those are the two things. Uh, but the bigger relief for the contributing agencies is not the one it's, it's sh saving in, in, in a sharing in cost, collection. The second is don't have to upfront right. to regional SAN when you do not have the revenue uh, uh, to upfront, which is what's required today. So Those regional, are the regional SAN will, will carry the that's the, correct. Carry the burden and, uh, and that's own, right. Yeah, and, Ultimately, the contributing agencies will c still collect the revenue on behalf right. of regional SAN, but the regional SAN will carry that burden on the back end until it until it gets okay. it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Manager. Thanks. All right. Very good. Next item is um, what we call I and I, which is infiltration inflow, and that's just extra water that gets into the sanitary sewer system, and when that happens, it can cause a lot of problems because it creates flows that are uh, several times greater than the standard flow in the sewer system. So that can either cause overflows from uh, pipelines or pump stations, or can overwhelm the capacity out at the plant as well. So, Christoph, can we just add to that that it's that's um, it's a phenomenon that happens where there's problems with pipe joints, and it, tip, it typically takes place in the winter time when it's raining. Correct. So most of the time, there, you can get groundwater infiltration, but most of what you see is when it, when it's really bad, really wet weather in the winter. That's when we get the really high flows at the plant. And so what you find is that there is a sweet spot. If you try to remove every drop of that water, it's very costly. Um, but there is a place where you can get more cost-effective removal of that water. Because if you don't remove the water, you have to building larger facilities, either at the plant or out in the collection system. And you also have additional treatment costs because now you're treating all of this water as well. So the idea in the, in the past, it simply said in the MIA that the contributing agencies had to remove the, what is called excessive uh, INI. That was not defined. So what we're proposing to do now is to do a collaborative study between regional SAN and the contributing agencies. Regional SAN is, is paying for the study. Um, that study will identify the areas where the, uh, the INI is greatest. It will also develop policy around how we define what is excessive, with the idea being that if we look at this holistically um, from a regional perspective, we can identify those projects that are cost effective and then uh, develop an appropriate cost share and move forward so that some of the projects can get done that, uh, you know, kind of the, the uh, bigger, bigger bang for your buck projects. So that's, that's the approach. Sir, how I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Christoph, this is Jeff Harris. How, how does this affect our combined sewer system? Do you consider that stormwater inflow INI or is is the combined sewer system more or less grandfathered into the equation? The, the latter, yes. So that we're kind of we're treating that separately. That's just a unique situation. Um, the the uh, storm drain system in the city of Sacramento that is combined will continue, and it's that that is not what we're talking about when we're talking about addressing I and I. Okay, it's thank the you. It's a separate Christoph. system. Yep. It's largely older neighborhoods, though. There's generally more I and I in older neighborhoods. Absolutely, yeah. it could be yeah. where soil types are different, and maybe in some of the newer areas where you've had some shift in some of the pipes yes. over time. So yeah. you can have a variety of different ways that water gets into the system too. Yeah. All right. The next topic is again, uh, Prabhakar briefly touched on it: the personnel, the staffing relationship between the county and the district. What we're proposing to do is we're saying really this agreement is about the relationship between the contributing agencies, 
that run their own sewer system and regional SAN. And the staffing issue is kind of a separate issue. And so we're, we're proposing to whatever staffing relationship we continue in the future, that that be covered under a separate agreement. So the idea is that in uh, June of 2024, when the MIA currently is, it, it currently expires in June of 2024, that's when the relationship the county relationship within this MIA would, would sunset. Um, we would continue to work on a separate agreement between now and 2024 to cover those, um, the, whatever aspects of that, that personnel relationship. Madam Chair, question. So yes. I know there's been some discussions over a number of years on this, so what's the status of the, the uh, negotiations, discussions, however you want to characterize them? So um, as, as some of the board members know that we have formed a subcommittee of the board and we have, uh, the board has, uh, the subcommittee has met a few times and we have developed guiding principles to guide us in terms of developing the future agreement. Uh, we have provided that to the county side uh, almost eight or nine months ago and th during this course as the subcommittee met and uh, you know, made changes or recommendations to the changes. What the plan is to bring those guiding principles to this board, uh, probably in March timeframe, to get a blessing from this board so that we can use those as a basis to establish the future relationship with the district. There's certainly areas, uh, the main thing is that to, to the master intelligence agreement, which we're, is today, there's really only one sentence in there. All it says is the county shall provide staff and the district shall pay. There's no expectation in terms of the quality of service, the, the, you know, in terms of metrics, the costs, and any of that. So the, the current agreement is not really a place for those kinds of things to be established, and that's the reason why we want to use these guiding principles to set the future agreements on a go-forward basis. And, and for that, it's like Christoph said, it's got about three years to, to do that. And, and uh, um, that's what's going on. Director Frost. Uh, Prabhakar, I think there was some concern regarding the how you separate that once you have it all together, the pensions, and, and yeah. I, I think that the, it was complicated. Can you, can you update us on we'll, how? We'll do that. Um, it's funny you, you bring up is that we just uh, asked the pension to look at that in case if uh, uh, the cost is actually the same. If anything, it's what they came back is, if, if the districts were to be a separate employer but still participate in the SCRS retirement system, the county retirement system, which can, it, it can do that because you have a number of uh, independent districts that are still part of the county retirement system like courts and things like that. Um, they looked at actuarially and said, probably it's about $100,000 less if the districts were to be, a, it's, it's, again, it's, it's a small percentage. It doesn't make or break, it doesn't, make a decision one way or another. So we will look at all of them, uh, but that's what we're gonna do over the next three year period to, as we establish, to say, these are the services the county will continue to provide, these are the services you know, that the district will, will get separately, something like that, and, and bring back to the board so that the board looks at it in totality. It might be good for us to have a, a look at the bigger perspective regarding how other districts, because I know you and I have had conversations around other districts, how they manage it. Um, it it's and, a, definitely a, a point that you brought up is just for the interest of the other members, there is no uh, other sanitation district in California that has this type of relationship. They all have their own staff. They all have, uh, they manage their own staff. Uh, that's how they're formed. We know of no sanitation district uh, in California that that's kind of relationship that, that exists perhaps, with this. Perhaps I'll just give the the overall summary. This a big part of this discussion happened when um, <clears throat> certain county employees wanted wanted the county to take over operation of the districts. That is no longer on the table. Again, I, I you know for those of us that know the backstory. Yeah. Again, it's, 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 we have some time to kind of work through these things. It's, uh, I think the, the, the important thing for the board to know is it's a status quo. Uh, you know, we have the relationship. We need to continue the relationship as we work through these issues. Uh, and I think in the end, we'll come to agreements 
that are beneficial for both parties uh, and then move forward. That's, that's how I would expect to see happen. Um, can I just offer a suggestion, and maybe you've already done this, but if you intend to bring this to us in March, this board, uh, it may be a good idea for Bacher to meet with our acting county executive, Ann Edwards, uh, uh, you know, in between net today and, and, and then. I think it would be important for, uh, again, obviously there are staff in place that have been, you know, party to the yeah. ongoing discussions over a number of years now, but I think it would be important for her uh, to... Um, I have to, already met with her. Okay. Uh, I had an initial briefing with her uh, in advance of bringing this item here. Okay. And, and I uh, also touched upon some high-level issues, but sure, there's a lot more to unpack in this, and I will continue to, to engage okay. with her and her staff. Yeah, um, Prabhakar and I had a conversation about that. And, and I also ago. have sent this to, to Anne um, and Steve Hartwig, uh, this letter and the attachment okay. before it came here. Great, very good. Thank you very much. All right, uh, next item, the, um, the MIA, I talked about the 50-year time frame, extending it out, the, also the five-year kind of review to make sure there's no items to address. Um, in addition, we have built in a little bit more flexibility in that there's a few um, sections, three of them, that we have identified that are more technical in nature that uh, would be they would be allowed to be approved so or changed, amended uh, by, a, by approval of the district engineer and then the district engineer's counterparts at that same level at the different contributing agencies. So like a utilities director or something like that. So those three uh, sections are, the numbers are 8, 29, and 38, but 8 is procedures for collection of rates uh, 29 is operation of the City of Sacramento combined flow facilities, and then 38 is the section on I&I, &I. and that's the one that we're, we're thinking there probably will be some amendments after we get through that study. So those are the items that we thought might help to have that brought down to a lower level. It is a challenge to get this through all of the um, uh, city councils and board. All of those have to get approval, and that's a pretty lengthy process which uh, brings me really to the last topic. I will mention um, there, uh, the, the only other item on there is just that there have been quite a few sections that have been deleted, um, and they're really just because they aren't uh, relevant anymore. It's kind of nice actually to be able to clean up a document and make it a little bit shorter. Um, usually these documents keep getting bigger, but. Christoph, what was the Folsom Interceptor section? Was that about FE3? It's the uh, it's the section that's now abandoned. It's now abandoned. It's a abandoned facility, so it's not. It, it doesn't oh, need to be. Okay, the one that um, was replaced along Folsom Boulevard. Yeah, it goes. It goes um, Folsom Boulevard and uh, to crosses the, where the freeway crosses Folsom Boulevard. Yeah, that's the end. That's been abandoned. Yeah. Okay, because there used to be a, a basin there that the city was using, and then this goes back a number of directors ago that. Um, the district wanted to use that as a, a chlorination facility and that's, okay. it's since been demolished. Yep. Okay. So Thanks. that's just an example. Um, so as a, so that, that's it for the, the MIA. I just wanted to mention then that the next step in the process are steps. We have a draft uh, MIA. We've been working with the contributing agencies and really it's at the, the, the last steps the legal counsels are reviewing and the contributing agencies are scheduling their um, getting their their ducks in a row essentially to move through either any committees that they have to go through or straight to their city council um, and we're hoping to bring something back in the april time frame to this board having had all of the contributing agencies already approved, except for SASD, which we would bring at the same time. So that's the, that's the schedule, that's what we're thinking. And with that, I'd answer any other questions. Any questions? Any questions from the folks on the phone? Good job, Christoph. All right, thank, thank you. you. That moves us to our next item. Next item is the Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sa Sacramento Area Sewer District, District Separate Matters Public Comment. And we do not have any public comments. No one is waiting to make a public comment. Okay. Okay. Um, Which case? Next um, item is uh, Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, District Consent Matters, items five and six. We 
have anybody that um, has any questions about items five or six? Do we have this is Jeannie. I move approval of consent. So I, yeah, okay, Jeannie, you get the motion. Really? So do you want to yeah. be a second? Yeah. Yep. Madam Chair, just because the item's here, I have no problem on the consent. I just wanted to, on the harvest water project, could we uh, schedule that for an update to our board so we know? I know there's been a lot of work. You've been looking at some of the costs associated, but... Um, yeah, Definitely. Um, it's timely, and we just, uh, internally, we just did a 10-year uh, financial projection okay. with some added costs to it, so it will bring back an update to the board um, separate from the okay. financial projections. Because I, I know you've done a lot of good work with folks. Yeah. I've talked with some folks yeah. out there, and then I think as the financial considerations got into it, some of the timing became questionable for some folks. And I think, you know, we're, we built a good body of support out there. Yes. I just, no, I, 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 sure think, we I think it's that a, definitely a, still a project to pursue. Yeah. Uh, there are things, obviously, your board needs to, to hear yeah. the changes and also provide some, you know, guidance and whatnot. And the, uh, and the RFP went out, what, yesterday? Uh, it was out actually for the, um, I believe, one segment was already there. Okay. There may be a newer one that went out yesterday. Okay. Uh, but certainly there's a couple of segments. The pump station that we are uh, doing designing separately. And there's also um, two sections of pipelines, the two okay. major sections of pipelines. I think the RFP is out on the street. Could you send the RFP? Maybe you sent it to us. I didn't see that. So could you could you send us a copy of that, Brubacher, the RFP? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. If you could. Yeah, for, I will send both of you, both, yeah, both those RFPs. Okay, good. And I think certainly, you know, I know Director, you know, Hume is saying to Alan, again, because it, you know, it emanates from the city of Elk Grove, obviously it's an incorporated area in large part to serve, but um, I just think it's important for us on the RFP, because if you're moving forward, I, I wasn't. Yes, we, we, are, we're making, we are making every effort to move forward. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're looking for new monies, you know, where we've got some sources, okay. but still, so, uh, we'll bring the update and also we'll send you the, the two RFPs. The RFPs, one is, like I said, is for the, the large pump station that we need to build on the property site, yeah. on, on our plant property, and also the RFP for yeah. the large pipelines, the 66-inch, and there's, a I think, 30 or 24 or 30-inch pipeline. There's two segments. Okay. So the, for those, the RFPs are Those are the transmission mains? That's correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah. Uh, we'll send you that. Okay, and again, just for historical perspective, for, um, for the newer folks on this board, this is basically, I didn't realize that it got a new name, that it was the Harvest Water Project, but um, this is a project that's basically been kind of on the, well, it was on the front burner a long time ago, and it slipped to the back burner when the city of Sacramento yeah. um, had no choice but um, to remove their finances. Good, good, good point. So, uh, yeah, for it's the something that's been the, in the, the works for a very, very long time, and it's a really yeah. good project. Yeah, well, it's, it's important for a lot of reasons, and I think from yeah. a standpoint of groundwater sustainability, but also use of recycled water, keeping the, those water that are generated and treated here in our county for yeah. useful purposes, including what's on today's agenda, which is to support the efforts with the Consumers Preserve and the Wildlife Refuge. And, you know, just that's there's right. a lot of elements here, including agriculture and, and uh, recycle water. So, anyway, yeah, Don, I, I Don and I have been here a really long time. <laughs> Hopefully, long, you're long enough to see this project to completion. So, <laughs> that way you wanted the RFP. Or you on it? <laughs> yeah, see what the timing is. I, I will, uh, this is Director Hume. I'll second that uh, desire. <laughs> I'd like to see this finally actually come to be. <laughs> When's that? You get that ribbon cutting scheduled? Okay. Uh, groundbreaking. Anyway. <laughs> okay. The clerk would call the roll, please. Member Bruins. Aye. And I'm sorry, um, that was a uh, motion by Member Frost, or no, it was Member Bruin Bruins, and seconded, and seconded by, by Member Frost. Um, right. Member Her Harris? Aye. Howell? Yes. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Loloe? Singh Allen? Singh Allen? Aye. Gatewood? Yes. Natoli? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Desmond? Aye. Serna? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Vang? Yes. Viegas? Aye. And Frost? Yes. 
And the motion passes with those members present. Madam Clerk, Madam yes. Chair, I have a request. Um, I need to step out here in another 10 minutes um, to have a medical appointment for my okay. wife. So what I would li I like is, if I think you don't mind. I think if we go quickly, we're going to be. No, no, let's go to eight and nine, uh, and then we can come back to seven. First okay. off, we'll continue the, you know, right. with the steps, yeah. if you don't mind. Um, acting as your Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District and Sacramento Area Sewer District, District Consent Matters, items eight and nine. Do you have any questions? We have a motion Mrs. by Bruins, Council. I move acceptance have approval of the consent matters eight and nine. We have <laughs> a motion by Frost. Eight, eight by is Bruins. a consent matter, nine is just a you know update. So eight. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. Eight. That's right. Okay. The clerk would call the roll, please. Yes. Member Bruins? Aye. Member Harris? Aye. Howell? Yes. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Lolo'i? Singh Allen? Aye. Gatewood? Natoli? Aye. Orozco? Aye. Desmond? Aye. Serna? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Bang? Yes. Viegas? Aye. And Frost? Aye. And the vote, it's a unanimous vote with those members present. And that was a motion by a member Frost, seconded by member Bruins? Yes. Okay, thank you. And we're back to item, item seven. seven. I, I, item nine, um, just I have a couple of things that I wanted to, to mention. Uh, we will have one meeting in February. We don't know if it's the first or the second, most likely the first meeting uh, in February. For the uh, new members, our meetings are the second Wednesdays and the fourth Wednesdays of the, of the month. Uh, typically, we only are needing one a month. Uh, occasionally, we need both, but typically only one. And I will send the calendar out. Uh, this was uh, provided to the board in December, but I'll send the calendar out so that you have it. There's a couple of months, I think, uh, because of the, uh, the conflict with the county uh, uh, meetings, uh, we are pushed to the third uh, week of the month, but at least I'll send that back out to you. Um, the, the next one is that um, we will be reaching out to the new members for an orientation uh, with the district staff. Um, we'll do, typically we do a field tour, but given our current situation, we'll do a, a Zoom uh, orientation with the executive team with the, both districts. And then later in the summer, uh, hopefully late spring and early summer, I would like to invite you for a tour of the treatment plant and the facilities. So that's the second one. And, um, I, and I highly recommend, especially for the new folks or anybody that has not been to the plant, that's very, very important that you understand the, the scope of the, the operation. And also just to say that we have the largest construction project in the county um, is going on now. It's, it's a roughly $2 billion upgrade. We're on the tail end of it. And I, I get amazed every so when I get there to see how much has changed. So I've been uh, with the district coming up 25 years. Um, the last but not least, for, for the, since I mentioned the 25 years, I am planning to retire at the end of August. Uh, and I, those of you that have been serving on this board, it's no surprise that I plan to leave this year. Um, and I will bring forth an item uh, at the next board meeting to establish a subcommittee to help with the recruitment of my successor, um, especially if, uh, uh, if my successor happens to be from outside. I strongly recommend that we have some overlap so that uh, there's a lot going on, uh, especially with the regional SAN and also to some extent with SASD. And I think it would be important to have that overlap, especially if it's somebody from outside. So I will uh, uh, bring uh, an item for your board to, to uh, establish the subcommittee to help with the recruitment process. And, and we should probably do that sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm sorry. We should do that sooner rather than later. Yes, actually, uh, next, next month is, is formation, then I want to hear your thoughts, how you want to do it, and then we can go through that process. So uh, that's what I wanted to do. That. OK. Um, with that, I'm going to let Christoph take over as a chair for the, for the item seven, and I'm, I'm going to step out. 
Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Sorry, I couldn't yeah. stay all the way through. Item number seven is acting as your Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District District separate matters. Recognition of Brian Young and Roger Jones for 25 years of service. Good morning, Chair and board members. I'm Glenn B. Lefelt. I'm the Director of Regional San Operations. Um, so I'm pleased to be here to present the recognition of two of our very notable employees uh, for 25 years of service, uh, Brian Young and Roger Jones. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes to read through the recognition letter, and then I'll have a few thoughts of my own. Brian Young is in the audience. I think he'd like to step up and say a few words as well. In 1995, both Brian and Roger began working at the Sacramento Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant as permanent Sacramento County employees. Roger holds an associate degree in journalism and a bachelor's of science degree in environmental resource science from the University of California at Davis. Between 1990 and 1995, Roger worked as a student intern and a contracted natural resource specialist at Regional SAN. And in 1995, Roger was hired as a natural resource specialist. In 2003, Roger promoted to senior natural resource specialist and he has continued, and he has continuously served Regional SAN in this position since then. He is a certified wildlife biologist by the Wildlife Society, a founding member of the California Native Grassland Association, and a previous board member of the Stone Lake National Wildlife Refuge Association. Brian earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Wildlife and Fisheries Biology from the University of California at Davis in 1992. In 1993, he joined Regional SAN as a contracted natural resource specialist, and in 1995, Brian was hired as a natural resource specialist. In 1998, Brian was promoted uh, to a natural resource supervisor and he has served regional sand in this position since then. Brian is a longtime member and previous board member of the California Native Grassland Association, a California Pest Control Advisor, a member of the Mather Field Scientific Advisory Committee, and a member of the California Society of Ecological Restoration. For the better part of 30 years, Roger and Brian have exemplified regional sand's commitment to environmental stewardship through their management of the bufferlands surrounding the regional uh, regional wastewater treatment plant. Their professional contributions to the scientific fields of wildlife management and conservation ecology, their environmental oversight of capital improvement projects, and through thousands of people that they have inspired through public outreach endeavors. Their hard work and the work of their colleagues contributed to transforming our bufferlands into one of the most biologically diverse and valuable pieces of property in Northern California. Roger, through his excellent photography, captures the beauty of the bufferlands and glimpses of this beauty can be seen in our annual Bufferlands calendar, which was distributed to you in the past couple of weeks. Regional SAN recommends that your board recognize Brian Young and Roger Jones for their 25 years of dedicated service to Regional SAN and the Sacramento community. All right. <laughs> oddly, on a personal note, oddly, I just had a friend call me earlier this week and ask me what the name of the Bufferlands was. And I thought it was an odd question, but she's actually a, a big bird photographer. And I told her she's not aware of it. She's a planning commissioner, actually, in the city of Folsom. And I said, oh, you've never seen the calendar? The calendar is like the coolest calendar ever. I haven't gotten mine, so if you guys have any extras and you want to send some to Folsom City Hall, I'll be happy to make sure that they get distributed throughout the community, because your photography, honestly, is amazing. Yeah, Roger did a great job. But the photography wouldn't be any good if you guys hadn't done such a good job with the buffer line, so. Truly, um, the region can be just proud of the buffer lens and how, how terrific it looks. Mm -hmm. On a very personal note, uh, I've known Roger and Brian for my entire career. Uh, when I began at Regional SAN in 1994, I first drove into the facility and it looked like it had been a long unused ranch land or farmland, so it was open space effectively. Uh, the wastewater treatment plant is in the middle of this 3,000 acre buffer lens area. Having said that, within my first few years of working there, um, I recollected that they had planted many, many thousands of trees. And so for the next 25 years, um, fortunately having worked there, I watched these trees grow. And that whole area is now effectively a forest, uh, an urban forest. So it's, it's astounding. Um, it's a terrific green belt, a wildlife re uh, rehabilitation area. Um, I, I feel often like I'm driving into a park when I come to work every day. 
On that, I'd like to say too that Brian uh, has acted as a lead and an escort to so many regional SAN staff over the years. Uh, he often steps in and helps us through the alphabet soup that is the regulatory agencies and our, our uh, partners in the region to uh, minimize the impacts of the flora and the fauna in the Bufferlands area. And that's why it continues to improve. Roger Jones, uh, as we mentioned the calendar before, but I think he's greatly contributed to the Esprit de Corps at Regional San. I know the employees at Regional San and others, uh, they look forward to the calendar and they very much appreciate it. It's truly a beautiful calendar. On that, I would just simply like to personally commend both Roger and Brian for a career well done so far. Yeah. No more retirements. We only had one announcement today, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think Brian would like to say a few words to the board as well. Madam Chair, while Brian's coming up, I just comment too that when Glenn was summarizing the buffer lands, I, I would just call out to both the Nicholas Ranch uh, Historic Farmhouse and the complex there. I know many of us have had a chance to tour and visit that and the opportunities there, certainly the Sims Ranch and, um, house and properties as staging areas for visitors of all ages. One to understand certainly the beauty and the you know, diversity of the buffer lands, but obviously to understand the functionality of the plant, as Glenn said, sits right in the middle of those uh, former ranches. And I think it really, um, I, I just know, I know that both Brian and, and, and Roger, certainly in their daily activities, are focused on a whole host of, you know, you know biologic and ecological work. But, you know, honoring certainly the environmental diversity, but also I think the agricultural heritage of uh, those that, uh, areas that were acquired for, as Prabhakar outlined earlier, for you know the largest project in, on the west coast for the largest plant inland uh, sewer treatment facility uh, uh, I think in California if I'm not mistaken maybe even along the west coast to do that and then I think to come around with the work that Brian the leadership certainly of, of Roger and in, in, in this district to I think you know uh, maintain the utility but also I think highlight uh, the importance of you know of the area you know historically certainly with the uh, settlement that occurred and certainly the farming and activities there and I just I, I credit uh, you know Brian and, and Roger and Glenn and you know Prabhakar and Christoph and a whole lot of folks uh, over the over the years and uh, I think we truly have a, a you know a you know not only a state-of-the-art facility but we have a lot to be proud of with regards to uh, you know how we highlight the, the diversity the biological ecological and I think the heritage there of of you know of working ranch uh, working ranches uh, at the time that were acquired for the plant's uh, location so i just I, I wanted to note that because there's been a, another piece of the work and i know i i for one have bugged them a bit over the years uh, about progress on some of those uh, uh, restoration efforts uh, but i again i think we can take great pride in the calendar as you said the madam chair really does highlight i think uh, certainly the diversity and the wonder of the buffer lands so. It might actually be one of the jewels in your district, Don. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. I would agree with that. Thank, thank you, uh, Supervisor Natoli. Thanks, uh, thanks, Glenn. Uh, thank you, thank you all. I really appreciate uh, the recognition here today. But I also want to just take this uh, opportunity to commend this board, uh, present and past, for just decades of decisions that have supported the sanitation district's commitment to environmental stewardship. Um, I've been around uh, a long time. Uh, I wasn't around when the original decision was made uh, to take a conservation approach to the management of the land surrounding the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, but I have been around to uh, help implement a number of projects and programs uh, that this board has approved um, that has turned the Bufferlands into a very important and uh, renowned wildlife area in, uh, in the region. Uh, so I think I, I first made a presentation in front of this board back in 1996. Um, I recall working with past uh, board members like Isla Collin, uh, Roger Dickinson, uh, and of course some familiar faces that are still serving our board today. I think uh, Supervisor Natoli was probably the only one here for my presentation in 96. Uh, but he was I think, eight back then. <laughs> <laughs> Because he got uh, elected was, to the Galt City Council when he was four. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, sure, I'm sure I got a few items in front of uh, Director Howell and Director Bruins in the early 2000s, but uh, I really want to thank uh, all the board and your predecessors. Uh, I don't appear in front of this board uh, very often, but when I do, it always tends to be on a discussion or a topic that, that generates a lot of discussion. 
And so I've always appreciated uh, your consideration and support over the years. Uh, similarly, with our Regional SAN Executive Management, I um, want to thank them for their role in shaping the Bufferlands program into uh, what it is today. Uh, and also for just their um, uh, really kind of kickstarting this whole conservation movement in, in our part of the valley. Uh, I think a lot of people don't recognize how important the work that we were doing on the Bufferlands back in the early 90s. Uh, the habitat restoration work, the Upper Beach Lake project, um, just how influential that was in uh, the decision to locate the 505th National Wildlife Refuge uh, in the country, right in our backyard, right across the street from us. And, and there I'm giving us all credit for the Stone Lakes National Wildlife Refuge. If I went on further, I'd probably uh, make a case for the Kasumas Preserve in the Yellow Basin Wildlife Area, that's a little thinner tie. Um, but uh, I think back to folks like Bob Shanks, uh, Wendell Keto, uh, Mary Snyder, uh, Stan Dean. Uh, I know Prabhakar had to leave, but uh, he's probably one of our biggest and uh, certainly tallest cheerleaders of the Bufferlands. Uh, <laughs> he's probably referred to the, the Bufferlands as the crown jewel of the county, uh, at least as often as, uh, as Glenn has bragged about the treatment plant being number one at handling number two. So, <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to new work logo? with them. Is that going on the letterhead now? Is that the I new, love the, it. The new logo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's been a pleasure to work with uh, all those folks through parts of their careers. Um, and uh, if you'll indulge me for another minute, I just want to say I'm honored to uh, be receiving this recognition alongside my coworker Roger Jones. Um, as Glenn mentioned, you know Roger. Well, Roger's been recognized for 25 years as well, uh, though he's been with the district longer than that, starting as a student 30 years ago and working as a contractor. Um, for a couple years before becoming a county employee. Uh, but Roger just uh, it brings a wealth of experience um, and perspective to the job. Um, he, uh, he's, he's got a, his career path to regional sand has uh, been, I think, more interesting than most. He, he grew up farming cotton in the Central Valley. He, he cowboyed on the Harris Ranch. Uh, he went and worked in the oil fields for a number of years, worked in heavy equipment. Um, and, and then it was his passion and his talent for photography. He took that, opened a, a photo mat in photography service, and only later in his career did he... Uh, um, Who remembers photo mat? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and Roger, Roger, by the way, is on the, on the phone, so I'm sure I'll hear from oh, him later. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, yeah, it was only later in his career that he went back to school, uh, went to UC Davis, furthered his degree, and became the biologist that he's uh, well known as and respected as today. Uh, so Roger is the one that uh, brought me on board to Regional SAN in the early 90s. Uh, and with Roger and our original uh, Bufferlands manager, Roy Nelson, uh, we put together a, a, an incredible team that's pretty well stayed intact for the last 25 years and just done some amazing stuff. So uh, we're both proud to be part of that group and proud to be part of Regional SAN. And again, just uh, thank you for the recognition here today. Thank you very much to both of you. Roger, yeah, I just want to add uh, a couple of quick comments. Uh, Prabhakar mentioned the um, uh, tours for, especially for new board members, but anyone who hasn't been out to the plant. Um, I, Brian didn't offer right then, but I've had several uh, tours over the years of the Bufferlands, and they're fantastic. So if you have an opportunity to do that, that's like a real special treat. Um, that and, same uh, friend that called me would give her right arm to go on one of those tours when that's possible. So we will, we will certainly be able to set those up when the time is right, um, and I encourage you to do that. And then also, if anyone has not received a Bufferlands calendar, like um, Director Howell said, uh, let us know, and we'll make sure that we, we get you one. So, yeah. Director Frost. Christoph, uh, uh, I think it would be really fun for all the new board members to see the albino deer photo. I don't know if it's available to send out, but it's 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 amazing. Yes, that that was a little bit of a news story for a little while. I think it was a ultimately an unfortunate story yeah. in the end, but um, we do have the pictures. And the, you know the story behind it, I, you know that's a pretty unusual circumstance to have a pure white albino deer, and it was running through the bufferlands, and there was two of them, I think. So. 
it was that got was up fun. on i got up on i five though, and that didn't uh, turn yeah. out so well. So beautiful though. We'll, we'll no, my favorite was the little bobcat from a few years ago. I I actually want the bobcat, but <laughs> did, did Roger want to say anything? If he's on the phone, you know, certainly I know he's on. A, he's a man of few words, but I don't know if he. Roger, you'll have to speak up if you'd like to. Roger, the, the other gentleman we were honoring, Roger and Brian, he's on the phone. Okay, th yeah. Maybe a little bit of delay here. Well, thank you very much to both of you, um, and thanks to um, everybody for making time to participate in the meeting today. And do we have any other comments or questions from board members either here in the room or on the phone? Okay, seeing none, we are adjourned at 1039.